Okay, um, now Holger will talk about PU parts, um, another quality assurance effort of him after the Jenkins yesterday. And yeah, enjoy. Hello, <coughs> good morning. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> um, I will talk about PU parts, what PU parts is, the development status and plans for the future. Um, I I'm de maintaining PU parts since 2006 or rather 2007. I was root on the PU parts Debian org machine before I was a DD. So in case <coughs> I just tell this as an example, the DSA is quite more flexible than it seems. Um, how many of you had bugs filed by PU parts against your package? How many of you had uh, received false positives? Only, oh. okay, <laughs> quite some. How many of you have filed bugs against PU parts? Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so Debian is defined by the Debian policy, which describes what is expected from and PU parts test against the policy. Um, Lindsay just looks at the sources and to find problems from there, and PU parts actually installs the package. Um, um, it finds pr um, problems during installation. Sorry, we gave you the one with it, which is apparently a bit broken. Okay. okay. That was actually a good one, but now it's breaking. Whatever. <laughs> this says prefer the other mic. Uh, well. We are so heavy. Better? Yes. yes, better now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pio parts is working. Um, Pio parts is short for package installation, upgrading, and removal testing suite, and um, that's what it does. Now, since a month, it also runs adequate at the end of the installation, so it finds issues reported by adequate as well. Um, if you don't know adequate, adequate is from Jakub Wilk. It, he introduced us half a year first to find something wrong with Python libraries, I think, and he added other tests also to find um, wrongly linked libraries, missing copyright, and other stuff. Um, also new since three months is the support for multiple slaves. Few parts has this master slave architecture, and in the past we only ran one slave, but since um, Debian has received this bike mark cluster, PU parts has moved there from a very old machine, and it's the slave is now running with four cores and lots of RAM, so there's nothing happening on the file system, on the disk anymore, and PU parts is now, I think, 15 to 20 times faster than the old machine, so it's really possible now to test one suit in four days or something. Well, it used to take two weeks. And one suit while there's still uploads are happening. Um, so we used to test just um, SID, testing to SID, VZ, squeeze to VZ, and squeeze. Um, nowadays, we test a lot more. Like, we also test whatever VZ to backports to Jesse and um, squeeze to backports sloppy. Um, what we don't test is Weezy proposed because we test upgrades from Weezy to Weezy proposed. Um, there's some wish list bugs for other combinations, but um, I'm not sure if that is the right way forward. Um, there were one million PO parts tests run in the last four years, I think. Um, with almost 2,000 bucks filed, and only th about 300 are still open. Um, for RC bucks, it's almost 1,400 RC bucks filed. Most of them are fixed. Um, and that's really just serious bucks with the numbers here. And 
also care about important bugs. And in average, it means there has been 0.86 RC bugs filed per day in the last four and a half years since 2009. Um, I think that's pretty impressive. And also impressive is the current status of Jesse, which is. So this is. There is up in the right corner 37,000 packages up past the test, only 43 failures, and this is with this um, purple background means that about these um, failures, no bugs have been filed. So all except four failure failures have been bugs filed, which is mostly the work of Andreas Beckmann the last year or something. He has by now, Andreas has overtaken Lars and me with filing few parts bugs. I think I filed over 400, Lars has filed 200, and Andreas over 1,000. So he's really super active. And for VZ, it looks even, well, that is VZ proposed. So this is VZ, where basically all green and only six failed blocks in VZ. VZ proposed looks completely green because we only started it testing after VZ was released. And there are eight um, failures instead of six in VZ. SID looks a bit worse. There are some bugs not filed, and there's in total 200 failures. That's because we are test more things and sit. To use PO parts is really super easy. Just install it and run it against the Debian package or run it against the changes <laughs> file. Since, I don't know, since this year probably PO parts also probably supports your having your own archive and um, getting some packages from the Debian archive and others from a local archive. And there's another way to test PO cards, of course, which is not the recommended way, just uploading the package and wait for PO parts to test it. Um, and I think everybody has done that, including me. It's not recommended, but that's just live. So. Um, originally, PO parts was written by Lars Vecenius, but he's dropped out of six years ago. Now it's mostly Andreas Beckmann, Dave Steele, and myself. There's not been many committers, like eight in total since 2010. And there was a new committer yesterday, and hopefully you will be the next. Um, I really like to take patches. There are many wishlist bugs, which are rather easy um, to implement, because there's, for example, if you have a test um, not testing um, user share doc, that user share doc is not writable. According to policy, that should be possible. Um, that test we have, another test we don't have is the same with user local. So if you're interested in that, um, to test how packages behave as lo user local is not writable, you can um, learn from this user share doc um, test. Um, we have a mailing list, PU parts list on alias. I also read Debian QA, so in principle I don't care on which list it is. Sometimes it's better on the QA list because it might be more suitable for Lincian tests or other tools, um, or just use the Q Debian QA IRC channel. Um, PU parts is maintained in Git. Um, if you want to work on it, check out the feature branch, please, or create a feature branch based on develop. Uh, and make your changes and send a pull request or file a bug. <coughs> we use master for releases, um, develop for the daily development, and the PU parts Debian org instance usually runs the same code as develop just when some bigger code, code reorganization happens. I switch off in a bike shed branch and use that for um, the Debian org setup. But normally it's really the same as develop. The roadmap is not really a roadmap. There is a huge to-do with ideas in Git, and we look at important or higher bugs. But in general, wishlist bugs are really ignored because there's other stuff to do. And 
There are some wish list bugs I really would like to see fixed, like PewParts used to have a unit test suite and it has rotten, so at the mo it's just disabled at the moment. So if someone of you is into unit tests, I would be really very happy to have this um, brought up to the usable state again. The other thing is have an archive with known good and bad packages, which PewPath can test, and so we can confirm that it still detects the same failures it used to detect. If someone is interested in keeping broken packages, this is a good opportunity. <laughs> um, there are some things, wish list bugs, um, which I don't care about, but I know other people care about. Um, there's <coughs> the extra test for init scripts. I'm personally not interested in testing init script or spending time on it because I think they need to go away. But I'd happily take the patch if someone wants this. Cow builder support I've also not implemented because running on a um, temp file system in RUM is fast enough for me. LVM support the same. Um, what I, the other bug I really would like to see is this make PU parts run without um, root privileges. That's possible with current SCH root um, tool. The DSA has done a similar thing with their CH root setup on Porter machines. So, and <coughs> in fact, this LVM support has been fixed in 2009. <laughs> I just keep thinking it's not implemented. Um, so if you care for your stuff, please submit patches. <coughs> During this step conf and before there has been talks about having PU parts run before accepting a package in the archive, um, the other option would be to run PU parts or to use PU parts to prevent testing migration. Um, I think it would be better to run it before accepting a package in the archive but maybe it's easier politically to get it inside the testing migration. Um, then the other thing, PU parts currently only test AMD64. Um, I don't think it's feasible at the moment, maybe later with more hardware, um, to run it on the whole archive for all the suits. As a first start, I would like, just like to test those packages which are not available on AMD64 and other architectures which are just a few packages. And there are these um, some errors detected by PU parts, which not cause of PU parts failure, like broken symlinks is one, and also some adequate issues, which I think should be promoted to PU parts failure status. But I don't think the Debian, uh, the Debian, the PU parts maintainers should decide that themselves, but rather um, the Debian community must define what's a critical error unless it's obvious from policy or from the behavior. What do you want? <laughs> and in the long run, I would like to go to automated bug filing for some issues. Um, but partly Andreas has been too, too productive in filing bugs. And partly I fear the problems with having automated bugs. Um, and I'm overworked. <laughs> that was it about. Thank you for running PU parts and for caring about the results. And I'd like to hear some feedbacks, ideas, comments. Everybody just sleepy. So for in dev scripts, you can configure the build to always run Lynchon after building a package. Is it possible to do the same with pure parts? I didn't get the beginning for what? Okay, uh, in the dev scripts configuration file, you can tell the build to always run Lynchon after you finish a build. Is it possible to do the same with pure parts? No, at the moment not. But that should not be too hard. It's just running against the produce changes file. Some uh, I'm not sure whether you've mentioned 
auto package test and whether it will ever be part of PO parts? I don't, <laughs> I don't think PO parts is the right tool for this because auto package tests are just in a few packages and you need to have s several setups like auto packages can destroy the environment and PU parts is currently only testing in CH root and I would like to have it outside also to keep the scope of PU parts sh um, smaller and just rather run auto package tester somewhere else. Have you ever thought about um, running pew parts as a Jenkins shop? I've thought about it and came to the conclusion it's not useful. <laughs> <laughs> like there are at the moment 250,000 active logs, and I don't. The, the way pew parts is set up um, is that you can scroll them by source packages and you have all these packages and I would don't really know how to um, map this in a Jenkins job. So, there is PTS integration, so the results are displayed in the PTS. Um, yeah. I think it's a danger, like there's many good good tools and often people try, oh, we try, need to get the everything in this tool and I think it's good to have several tools doing several jobs. Yeah. Uh, about the PTS integration, do you have a JSON dump or something that we could import in UDD? Um, at the moment it's just a TXT file with um, all packages. There's a wish list bug to improve that um, for all the suits, but there's no JSON this now in the design. I could give you the number, the bug number, where we discussed this. Are there complaints about PU parts? So I must admit I'm one of the guys who's just uploading and then checking PyoParts afterwards. Um, how, how much do Lynch and PyoParts overlap or, or do completely different things? I'm not quite clear on that. Or already? They overlap a little, like Lincian also detects missing copyright files and PU parts detect them. But there are many, or Lincian just looks at the source code and some problems are not, cannot be as well detected by just installing it and t comparing the system before and after. So they complement each other. Okay, thanks. And sometimes it's also more effective to, it's more effective if you can test it with Lincian, it's better because Lincian is run by more people, it runs faster. Um, so it's better to have the test on Lincian if possible. So, so yes, but what also happens is that, well, I get bug reports for Lincian clean packages from PyoParts. So there are definitely things that are not detected, quite a lot actually, by Lincian. The question is that I have um, is, it, is it possible to join efforts more for these two project, projects? Or is the design so different? It is different, I know. But is it, is it so different that it actually targets at some completely different part of the One packaging workflow and the installation workflow? They really work completely differently because Lintian is, in effect, unpacking a source package and looking at its contents and doing pattern matching sort of analysis to look for the presence or absence of various things, combinations of things that should or shouldn't exist. Whereas PU Parts is, is actually sort of taking complete packages and installing them and looking at the consequences on a system. So it's actually very different machinery. 
I suppose in theory, PU parts could run Lintian as part of its process, but since it's really focusing on the installation and removal characteristics of binary packages, it's sort of a different data set, and it makes sense to me at least conceptually that they're separate efforts. And while there are some things, as Holger says, where they, they overlap a little bit in what they can detect, um, I, that's never actually bothered me. I mean, I've never sort of had different people complaining about the same problem in the same package at the same time, perhaps because I am much more careful about running Lintian on all my packages before uploading them in PU parts, but. You can't, could add more patterns to Lintian to, to, to try to detect more things, but I think that for some problems it's very difficult, and if there's another solution to test these things, we can also use them and improve P uh, Lintian in other ways. And also with now with the new third tool, Adequat, Adequat also looks at the package after it's installed. Um, so that's different from that, what, that what Lincian does again. So and I like these three tools, and I also like PU parts to um, keep only detecting serious problems or important issues. So that you can always say PU parts failure is always a real, imp at least important problem. Um, and other tools, PU parts should also find other problems but not fail because of this. So I, I have this distinction between failure really and just complaining about mineral stuff. But PU parts should never com fail about mineral stuff. Well, if there are no more questions, we can go out in the sun or something. Yeah, thank you, Holger. Uh,